G'day, I'm David Moyle. Welcome to Bent Notes on Location at the Wangaratta Festival of Jazz and Blues for 2016. Saturday night, the sun's going down, a beautiful night for jazz, and tonight in the Memorial Hall here at the Wangaratta Performing Arts Centre, we have Eugene Ball. He's no stranger to the festival, but tonight is his first appearance with his band, the Eugene Ball Fortet. The first appearance, in fact, after they've released their album, High Curious. Let's go and have a look and see Eugene Ball and his Fortet. Bent Notes had a sneak peek during rehearsal before Martin Jackson introduced Eugene Ball and his Fortet. I'm Martin Jackson from the Melbourne Jazz Cooperative and uh, welcome to this evening's performance of the Eugene Ball Quartet. This is a tune <laughs> uh, that was written by Louis Armstrong and Lil Harden, uh, first recorded in 1927 on one of the, uh, well, first Hot 7 recordings. Uh, and it's called the Potato Head Blues. Mm -hmm. Fresh from the Memorial Hall here at the Wangaratta Performing Arts Centre is Eugene Ball. He's just come off stage. The hall's used for a bit more experimental music most of the time here in the festival. And Eugene, that was uh, a fantastic concert tonight, and it certainly fitted Thank that you. experimental mode. <laughs> Great. Now, Thanks, it was your own band tonight. Yes. The Eugene Ball Fortet. That's right. Uh, so you've been a sideman for many, many years. What's convinced you to head out and have your own name up there on the top of the banner? Yeah. Uh, I think for... Um, for me, you know, for many years I kind of thought about doing it, but you know, to be honest, I've been too busy to kind of really think about it. And it was also a question of uh, because, because I'm sort of fortunate enough to play in you know, a really wide variety of musical styles, and uh, you know, I work as an arranger and a composer as well, so I kind of have a really sort of diverse engagement with music. I think it was I was very confused about what I might put on you know, a single album that might kind of represent who I am and what I do as a musician. And then I guess I kind of figured out that, um, I finally came to the realisation that, you know, a, a, an album doesn't have to be all encapsulating, it can just be a kind of, you know, a snapshot in time and that made me relax and just put something together. So it's your first album under your own name? Yeah. And you just put it together because you thought it was time to do something? Yeah, I'd, I'd started playing, you know, I mean, I've sort of put things together on occasion, sort of under my own name, but nothing that ever kind of had any real impetus. But um, this one kind of stuck, and I thought, well, I might as well just bite the bullet and record it. I mean, it's, it's you know, pretty easy to record these days in terms of um, technologies. We, re we recorded it at uh, the Moreland City Band Hall, so, you know, I kind of did a barter deal with them to get the hall and Phil Noy, the um, saxophonist, has been doing lots of work as a recording engineer of late, so he brought in all of his magnificent gear and we just did it, you know, really simply and, you know, really quite cheaply, so it's, it's um, yeah, it's much easier to do these days than having to hire a full studio. It was great to hear it performed live tonight as opposed to just listening to the, the CD. Uh, here at festival, it's an opportunity to do so much. How does the festival fit into your musical journey? I think some of the most important um, uh, peaks in my career have been here. Not necessarily, you know, I'm not saying that the, the, the best performances I've ever had are here, but you know, some of the some of the important um, works that I've worked on with Alan Brown, for instance, have all been kind of well e either launched here or you know sort of pre-launched here. Um, the same with the work that I've done with Andrea Keller. Um, you know, it's been it's been a focal point for um, releasing of albums and sort of birth of projects in in those ensembles. Um, the Hoodangers, my kind of traditional slash punk band or whatever, has um, been here on and off for years as well. And that's you know I've been with that that band is now twenty 
five years old or something. Almost so. as old as the festival. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it, it's just a kind of um, it's a it's a it's more than a common thread. It's a kind of glue, I guess, that kind of holds it all together. And as a musician, what do you think grabs the audience's attention? to come here and experience this magnificent festival of I really think it is that idea of it being out of the capital city, so they can't kind of, you know, the, the, the Melbourne Interna International Jazz Festival, I think, is a fantastic festival, um, but it's still a city-based festival, so, you know, for, even for us as performers, when we're playing at that festival, you kind of you squeeze the performances in around your other kind of daily life, whereas here, you, you very much have to kind of leave all that behind and come up here and you know in between between uh, sets uh, if, if you don't have to parent as we do at the moment um, when you're between sets you know you kind of just catch up with other musicians and you know you don't have to do the washing and you don't have to do emails and you know that kind of thing so it's, I think the lure of it really is that sort of um, separation from city that makes people kind of um, let go and, and engage with it more freely or something yeah. Now you talked tonight about weird tunes, your weird yeah. tunes in fact you called them. Piers Pumpkin is one of them. Do you have a, a penchant for, for writing weird tunes? Yeah, I think so, for sure. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I did with Al Brown in his quintet was, you know, pretty weird. But I mean, I say weird, but it's, again, because I come from a kind of, you know, um, from a traditional jazz background, um, I, I, yeah, I... I I think I kind of try to keep, always kind of keep some kind of balance of, um, it's hard to explain, of, um, like I like things to be very, very weird, but I like something to kind of pin it to the ground as well. Something yeah. also for the audience to, to, yeah. to hold to as they experience the weirdness. Yeah, well, I mean, I also think of, you know, music and improvised music like any other form of art. I mean, you know, if you go to an art gallery, you don't need to understand everything about everything that's being made. You can sort of appreciate it from a really, you know, naive perspective, and that can be a really beautiful thing. And you, you might you might take something away from it that wasn't the intention of the author or the, or the creator, but that's fine. That's kind of the point, I think. Let's hope that tonight in the audience, which is a fantastic audience, Thank you. that they have taken something yeah. new away from your performance tonight. Eugene Ball, so thank you so much for having a chat to us on... Thank you.